All right, so I wanted to do a wrap up video um, and I'm actually gonna put this at the beginning, but I'll give you a snapshot of what I did and uh, how the results turned out. So here's the ceiling, you know, cover that's all in place. Uh, not much to look at. One of the things I'll note and one of the reasons I'm doing this video is a lot of the videos that say, hey, add a second AC unit or add an AC unit to your RV have a different bottom piece. And what I mean by that is this, uh, this mounting plate has the knobs on it and blows the air only from here. So I didn't want that. I wanted uh, a remote thermostat and I also had um, a duct, you know, I also had the, the ducting already in the ceiling. So that's what I went with. So you're gonna need three things three things. One, you need the AC unit for the roof, right? That's a given. Two, you need the mounting plate, either ducted or non-ducted. Most rooftop AC units can be used either ducted or non-ducted. It doesn't matter. It's the same rooftop AC unit. What changes is the part that goes inside the RV. That's going to change. It's either going to have the knobs or it's not. So make sure you get the right one and you need it because the AC unit that comes on the roof, it's all you get in the box. It's an AC unit and that's it. Maybe a book, but it doesn't tell you anything, right? So you need the mounting kit. And third, you need the control box. The control box is gonna come with the thermostat, no wiring, just a thermostat. And it'll have the plug-in that goes into um, the control box, one goes up into the coils, it's a freeze protection something, whatever, put it in there. Um, the cord that drops down, it's just that fat cord that comes from the rooftop AC unit, plugs into that control box, you need the control box. A fourth item you may need if you have a newer RV is some, you know, it's like a communication thing. So, you know, I called uh, Dometic and talked to one of the reps and, um, he said, if I had a digital thermostat originally in the RV, and I'll show you. So if this was digital, I could have ran the thermostat wire doo -doo -doo -doo, somehow all the way down and tied it into this. So I'd only have one control and it would do, you know, it would run both so long as they had power. But since this is analog and I didn't feel like spending a bunch of money to switch this out to digital, I just left this and this AC unit completely separate. And then I wanted this on its own, you know, own thermostat back here, as well as its own power. That's another thing that the other videos didn't show is, you know, they're tying into the same power. So I wanted a separate, completely separate power. So when I pull up to the RV campsite, boom, I plug in my 30 amp that powers the main AC as well as everything else in the RV. And then I, they always usually have a, a standard, you know, house 15, 20 amp, usually 20 amp outlet um, that I can run this AC unit off of all by itself. And I don't have to worry, um, you know, any of that, anything to that effect. So I, in the other videos, I'll show you how and the wiring and hit the wiring. I'll kind of show you how I hooked it up. Um, but I'll just show you kind of the final thing. So AC units installed, thermostat wire comes down here, and then I'll show you the power box. Okay, I'm back. So here's the power box. You'll notice main power. Um, I don't know why they didn't run it through the hole. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Here's main power, right? Comes up and goes up into the bedroom, into that box. So this comes out. Right? And it goes, this is on a 30 amp plug. I have it on a 30 amp extension cord, but this is the three prong 30 amp plug. This powers the entire, you know, the entire motorhome. Okay, that's the main. And that powers the central AC that's in the front. 
So if you look here, I followed that same line, punched down, and just hooked over here, you know, not the cleanest, but I didn't want to put a bunch of mounts in here, whatever. So put it in here, got a box. This is, and then I got this, um, these are, they have little covers in here. It's weather resistant. Um, so, you know, I kind of went, I kind of upgraded. They don't cost that much. So then I just mounted this box in here, right? And uh, I made this wire. So heavy gauge, um, heavy duty plug. Okay, that plugs right in. Right, weather resistant. Standard house plug, 15 amp plug. Right, this, this AC unit pulls, I think, 12 amps. But that's the only thing on here, so I don't have to worry about it. Okay, plugs in nice and snug. Okay, and that runs the other way. All right, and that runs and plugs into a completely separate plug. Um, and that's it. So when I pull up to the campsite, right, I'll plug my main in, boop, I'll plug in my separate AC unit that I have out here, and uh, all of them. If you have any questions, feel free to, to ask. Um, I'm just doing this to hopefully help somebody else out that was in the same position I was in, and I uh, hope it all works out. Talk to you guys soon. All right, I wanted to do a video uh, or at least start recording before I got too far into it. Um, this project is adding a second air conditioning unit to the top of my motorhome. Um, so <clears throat> it says it's pre-wired, which I guess it is. It has 120 running. That white wire there runs in and goes to this box. just had a plate over it. So that's just a standard 120. And that goes in, I'm assuming, down there, down here, and it's one of these in this mess. On the front, you have standard breakers. This red one here is for the AC. And then here you have the Super Whamadyne, you know, air conditioner selector. So. It's wired to where I can power, you know, both if I want to. The problem is that my RV is only a 30 amp RV. Running two AC units is gonna pull about 22 to 25 amps. And um, <clears throat> even if you're in a 30 amp campground, um, those breakers cycle a few times and, and you're down in the 20s anyway. So. My plan is to wire it completely separate. So I'll have a 20, 20 amp plug that's outside uh, that I plug in separate. So make a long story longer. Originally I was gonna punch through there, come this way into the closet down punch a hole down there which puts me in a little bin you know where the uh, where the regular power is um, and power it that way uh, just put a receptacle down there but I just had an idea about hey why don't I just use the power that's there find where it is on this end you know let's just say for example it's this wire here disconnect this continue it on and then just continue it down and end up punching out that way. So I don't have to worry about drilling a bunch of holes and hiding a bunch of wires. It's already ran and hidden for me. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I have my multimeter here. I'm just so lucky enough that my leads reach. So I'm gonna kill the power and take this off and start doing continuity checks between down here and up there, figure out which one it is, and then go from there. Stand by. Okay, so I got lucky, and of course it was the fourth one I tried, but I'm kidding, I wasn't lucky. But it wasn't these top two, I ended up turning it 
it's this one here. So this is where I got my continuity. And if you don't know how to do that, you go to the uh, go to the ohm setting here, touch your leads, right, and you'll get a, a low ohm uh, resistance, right. So touch these two wires. Um, you know, I, I just barely reached, so I ended up pulling those wires out and got them as close as I could to myself. Touched one, bent down and got the other, and by golly, I got continuity. So I'm in business. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull these out of here. Now the grounds are all, you know, they're all twisted, twisted together back there. Find the ground, right? Get this wire out back here. Um, I, st I don't know which one it is. I'll figure it out. And then, uh, and then just go to town, put some twist, twist locks on it and just start routing my way outside. And then I'll, um, I'll have remote power. All right. I got everything buttoned back up, got the wire off. I'm going to do voltage checks on the wire. I just disconnected, make sure it's, uh, doesn't have any power to it. So I'm in voltage mode, AC. Hey, nothing there. Check the neutral, shouldn't have anything. Half a volt. So I'm getting a little bit of ghost voltage. So even though uh, it's disconnected and doesn't have any power, I'm getting some power through it just from the surrounding cables that are around it. It's, it's called ghost voltage. Um, so I'll have to be a little careful, you know, kind of as I go. Um, yeah, I mean, it's real minimal. 0 0.1. 0 .1 eh, it's jumping around a little bit, 0.5. And back down to zero. So I'm getting about a half a volt. Um, nothing to call home about, but anyways, now for the routing. All right, update time. So I've actually done a lot of, made a lot of progress here. I wired these together off that lead you saw last time. I ran it out there and I just followed a cord. The main power cord is this black one, this big one, this big honker. Right, that's the main one coming in. So I just followed that down out and installed a receptacle box um, out in that same spot. I can show you that later. So that's power. Thermostat, what a pain in the butt. So I just, so up here, you know, you had to cut these three edges and then it fold the flap down while well, I was looking back I guess it'd be aft uh, and there was looked like it kept going so I said screw it and I just started blind drilling so I got a little cold air coming out of here so this one's obviously connected I kept walking this way and I, I'll probably just foam insulate these or or something. I'm not too worried about it. It's tucked in here. You can't really see it. But anyways, I went up this way and got my, my thermostat wire coming out of here. So that'll connect up. And then I punched it through here. came in there and then I just threw some staples in ran it down and over here so 
If you can't see it, well, I'll get, hide that a little bit better anyways. But that's what you'll see, you know, that one wire. And then that comes out to the thermostat, which has the, you know, it's got the cover here. And I centered it, you know, on that little spot there. But it'll be nice because I'll be able to wake up you know, if I'm hot or whatever and, uh, and and mess with it right from where I'm laying down. So, thermostat wire in, power is in. I cut, you know, if you remember before, there was a little 12 volt fan, push button fan, and it had the 12 volts coming out. So, I cut it live. I just cut one at a time and I threw these caps on there just to keep it, you know, whatever. Um, so this is the 12 volt coming down. This is, you know, 120 coming down. Thermostat. This is just speaker wire that needs to get hidden. It just, it passes across, so I gotta hide that. So then I went on the roof um, and I took that, you know, skylight out. It's pretty simple, scrape away the putty. Careful not to dig into the roof because it's a rubber roof. Um, you'll expose some screws. I picked out the Phillips head with a, with a scribe just so I can get a good bite on them. It pulled the screws out and boom, thing came right out, no problem. So then I dropped the new AC unit down. Um, I don't know if you could tell from the from the phone from the phone, but you know there's a I'd say about an inch. There we go. About an inch of foam. A nice padded foam that when you drive, so it's mounted with these four corners. So when you put the mount here and you have these long all threads, you know, it'll pull the whole thing down and, and create that seal. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention, before I put this AC unit on, those holes that were in the roof up here, I just put some, uh, I put some flex seal. It's a little squeeze tube. You know, just gooped it in there, whatever. Hope for the best. And uh, so where I'm at is I got the AC unit squared away. They say you need two people. You really don't. I mean, you can move it around. It's not, it's not impossible. So I think I got it to where it's kind of square. I just pulled this down. Um, this is the only thing that comes from the AC unit and it goes into a box that's in there. So I'll show you that once I get it all up and kind of ready to go. But effectively this plugs into the box and then all this other crap, well that's speaker wire, bad example. We'll plug into that, uh, that control box. And in theory, um, it'll work. So stay tuned. Okay, so uh, fast forward a bit. Uh, op check is set. I got it set on cool, and this baby is blowing like no other right now. It is intense. When I put the when you know, when I put the cover on, it'll send it into those ducts, but it is. I mean, it's really blowing, and it's cold. I put um, I put waterproof caps on all these. I probably didn't need to, but you never know. I mean, the water's gonna drip in here anyway, so it's kind of a moot point. But um, let me get this thing buttoned up, and then I'll, I'll kind of go over some more details.